I'm sure most of you don't know about this because it's mostly inside baseball techno news. But unfortunately, the last week, um, I saw this crazy news on my timeline about this guy that I follow on Instagram and who also is part of a podcast called um, Das Techno Team, um, who goes by the name of Life by Kaizen, also known as Robert Maguire. Unfortunately, he passed away a week ago. Um, when I saw it on my timeline, I'm not going to lie, it kind of caught me, you know, off guard i was like jesus christos especially coming off the back of you know my the unfortunate passing of my friend as well um joshua sweeney recently it kind of seemed like wow man like you know you definitely could tell you're getting older when all these people around you some of them you know some of them you don't know but you know people maybe within the same age bracket are all kind of passing away randomly it's like jesus christ um death is coming for us all in it not to be macabre but um the really sad thing about this is that I only found, I only found out about this guy what in the last couple of years I think mostly because of COVID. Um, if you don't know, he's kind of been you know he went a bit viral during the COVID era because of this um, iconic video of him dancing at a rave. You know, he's this big buff dude um, dancing with a beret on, topless somewhere in a raves in Berlin, in Kiev, in Amsterdam and shit. Right during the lockdown, mostly in it when it was peak COVID times and shit, right? And he was kind of known for like kind of dancing cool and looking the way that he did. Da, da, da. And he was also part of a collective called Drift Kiev that did a lot of parties, obviously in Kiev and other parts of Europe as well, plus like Berlin and whatnot, right? So kind of a man about town. But then he was also part of this um podcast thing called Das Techno Team that I listened to a lot, where, you know, it was a bit navel gazily and shit, but I liked it because, you know, they took themselves very seriously. They talk, spoke a lot about clubbing shit, and I would always kind of tune in and listen to it and obviously check out his Instagram from time to time. So, you know, a little bit of a larger than life character. Um, I think he's originally from the UK who, you know, moved over to the um, Berlin a few years ago to obviously pursue a life of hedonism within the nightlife scene. And he talks very openly. He did talk very openly and very honestly about, you know, nightlife and the pros and cons of it and the drugs and the, the you know, whatever else it may be. And from how he spoke, he always seemed very, very level headed, you know, very level headed and chilled. He never really seemed like he was lost in the source, for lack of a better term. So it was surprising when I heard the news that he passed. I'm not going to lie, because he always seemed like somebody that kind of had a handle on that shit. And again, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming here, I have no idea what the cause of death is. So, you know, forgive me for that thing. But if it is linked to that, then that's obviously sad. But the caption just like, it caught me off guard. I was like, Jesus Christ, man. Like, imagine somebody who's like, you know, the life of the party, who's very well known very plugged into the scene clearly a very very popular guy you know and the way you go out is like you know you're found basically you're unresponsive um in your own part in your own place by yourself type of thing it's just so tragic man really really gut-wrenching so um you know my thoughts and feelings go out to um robert Maguire, aka life by kaizen's family and friends out there who are probably you know i don't know what you guys are going through mourning that especially now you know towards the end of the year you know especially in berlin it's probably a big time now for everybody to be going out and celebrating and shit and capping off a big end of year with marathon parties and shit to not have this guy around who's obviously a mainstay in a lot of people's social groups and shit it's going to live a really really big hole um, but let me read the caption here from one of his friends our dear and beloved brother friend colleague robert Maguire, life by kaizen was found unresponsive at his flat on monday evening we are shocked and devastated by this news we will share more information when possible at the moment we ask for your respect and grief of the family and friends please pray for his soul and celebrate the life of our angel for his wonderful impact on the world and our hearts we will remember him forever so really really sad and as you can see many many um you know um tributes out there from him from loads of uh, people here another one person here says too good for this world an absolute force of a positive nature you left your mark on everyone that came into contact with your aura godspeed my dear friend i will never forget you or your love my dear friend another person says after coming back from this post i must how wonderful it is to read so many beautiful comments and for some recollections it really shows how special he was to so many people and left a heart and an impact on so many people's lives a soul like this will be missed but we must celebrate the moment shared together rest in peace rob um, another person says condolences to his family in total shock let this be a reminder that life can end at any moment no matter your age and how much of a good person you are another one says r.i.p rob i remember him giving me a tip of 10 euros whilst i was working at a wardrobe in a place called cloud was that 
culture culture house killy he told me you deserve it it's because you shine like a light and now we will also remember him as one my condolences to all friends and his family unique and beautiful i met robbie once but this kind of person left unforgivable spot in my memory he spread love and kindness and acceptance this is the kind of person with which you want to spend more time and accept the knowledge of oh my god this is too much love you robbie and yeah and so forth and so forth so it's good to see you know the touching tributes people leaving for him clearly the guy was an angel the guy was a saint in real life right people actually actually liked him um and he came across very very well but it is definitely a stark reminder of you know what it what that what that lifestyle is again i have no idea what the cause of death is so i'm just you know i'm talking out my ass here but you know this is just the reality of the situation um there is no there's no kind of beating around the bush you know there is no real beating around the bush around it when it comes to this sort of stuff like you know the unfortunate dark side of nightlife is what it is the you know when it's good it's good when it's bad it's fucking bad but you know it's it's really sad to see somebody like this so again through the podcast mainly listening to him who really had a good handle on his outlook on the on you know on nightlife who kind of spread good vibes had really good insights around it and shit and was always somebody who i felt like um was really spreading a good message out there and it's really unfortunate that his life got cut short so r.i.p to robert Maguire. r.i.p to robert Maguire. force and feelings go out to his family and friends i really can't you know imagine what they're kind of going through at the moment and yeah man prayers to everybody involved prayers to everybody involved really really prayers and it kind of makes me think a little bit about um you know messages i've been receiving from people and stuff you know behind the scenes about stuff going on in the industry and shit and it's like it really makes you wonder how people are able to operate within the industry day to day and without getting crazy because there's so much horrible fuck shit going on and again big up everybody who does ever reach out to me you know if you want to unburden yourself with whatever you're going through feel free because i'm you know i'm never going to repeat anything to anybody else or share it in public because you know <laughs> there's no friends around here for me to gossip about these things with so i'll just share them you know vaguely here on the pod but the things that are going on behind the scenes with some, with some people like you would honestly it would, it, it would make you cry it would make even a guy like me a hardened fug of a guy like me fucking weep at the stuff that's going on behind the scenes and the scene and shit so the ones who are out there who are fighting a good fight who are you know out there for the good reasons who are out there for the right reasons spreading joy spreading the music want to dance connect with people find love whatever you're doing you know I don't I commend you I really do commend you because every single day you are literally rolling a dice with your life and shit you know vis-a-vis -vis your lifestyle vis-a-vis -vis the people around you vis-a-vis -vis the situations you get put in so really strength and power to everybody out there in the industry who is making a career for themselves out there because nightlife is no game and it's no fucking game and I keep thinking about it all the time when I was younger, my parents would always say to me, because, you know, I was a bit rebellious and I always wanted to go out, you know, always wanted to be at raves and shit. And they were really conservative and really wanted me to stay in and shit and be reading the Bible all every day. And obviously didn't want that. But something they always say and they would always stick to me and it's always stuck with me now is, you know, nothing really good happens after 9 p.m. And that's a fact, really and truly. Like, as much as I love night nightlife, like, nothing really good happens after 9 p.m. And it really is a land you know you really are surrounding yourself with fucking demons and heathens when you're out there after 9 p.m so um you know mind your p's and q's um stay solid you know check your square make sure your flipping crew is legit and obviously call out all the fuck shit and enjoy yourself in it because you know um nothing in life is guaranteed unfortunately nothing in life is guaranteed robbie tell me uh, something about your name first uh, everybody knows you on social media as uh, life by kaizen or kaizen or captain techno or major techno <laughs> or uh, <laughs> uh yeah tell me about the origin or how did you come up with that name i mean most people when they see me uh, say wait you're that guy that guy so this is the uh, this is the other one i hear as much as captain techno or kaizen kaizen um <laughs> What was the question? Where did the name come from? Yeah, how do you come up? What is Kaizen? Who is Kaizen? See, this, I mean, this was my, my first Instagram handle from when I first made Instagram in, I guess, 2015. I was a, a late joiner. I was more using Facebook at the time. And Kaizen uh, at the time was something I was applying to my, my training. I used to be into very high level uh, powerlifting and bodybuilding combat at some point. And uh, for me, it was just this, uh, the, the word Kaizen is Japanese and mm -hmm. it's... Uh, basically means continual non-stop development. 
Um, that's what it means. Basically, basically wow. agile, you know. Wow. And actually, this 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 uh, this word now to me has a different meaning to what it what it did then. Before it was about sacrifice and about an obsession mainly with physical training you know this was my real catharsis and where i got my sense of growth and accomplishment from generally speaking uh, but now obviously like yes i still look after my body and, and i'm in very good shape you know but this is not this is not a goal of my life and i'm in great shape because i love myself not because i hate myself which is where i think a lot of the egos come from that are end up as guys obsessed with being mm. the biggest baddest motherfucker they can appear as <laughs> you know what i mean yeah um and now it's about still about continual non-stop development but what, what it I'm sounds about, german as well i must say or yeah, or, I mean, or I dutch mean, i mean yeah i i mean i mean i mean well yeah i mean now for me it's about emotional development and about personal growth and about being the best most expressed kindest person that i can be you know relative to who i am nice um but I don't think uh, a German would use it in that way. <laughs> no, probably not. Probably not. Yeah, cool, man. I uh, I think it's your brand. I think uh, it seems to have become that, you know, yeah. because um, yeah, some people some people know know my name's Rob. Some people don't. Um, more people will recognize my yeah me from social media than be, maybe then having had me introduce myself to them, you know. Um, but yeah, I like it. I mean, it's a nice, it's a nice, it's a nice identity, uh, nice, ni nice, uh, phrase to be associated with. And it's something that I, I guess I feel I still embody. Otherwise I would have changed the name to Captain Techno. <laughs> <laughs> Or Techno Viking 2.0. Techno Millennial Techno Viking. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But I think Rob fits you as well uh, as, as, uh, as minimum as Kaizen. So. I think it's nice to if if uh, anybody who knows you and uh, sees you as both Kaizen and Rob uh, as really I don't know if I can say from my perspective that's the real whole picture. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Well, I mean, I mean, like Rob is the whole picture actually, but most people don't know the whole picture. Most people just know this slither of it, you know, and this slither of it is no less me than the rest of it. It's just the part that is blah you know that, that no one can no one can avoid if they're anywhere near it because it's so fucking big and loud you know <laughs> um but there's the other sliver which is which no one sees apart from me you know mm. because it that's that, that's what allows me to be here is because i have here to recharge you know nice. um but yeah for sure like uh it's 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 i i enjoy i enjoy the the adoration uh that this this slither of me gets you know um but uh yeah there's there's a lot going on beneath the uh beneath the hood <laughs> nice nice <laughs> that's uh yeah but we we know it we know it um i think there's a lot of reflection in what you do and how you think from what i know you yeah i think there's a lot of reflection yeah 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 nice man um and for you yeah huh? i'm for you bro <laughs> <laughs> um so just shortly about your childhood so it's our first episode straight in, uh, straight, straight, in, in straight, straight, straight in from yeah, like yeah yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah if we're going deep into the kaizen and deep into the rob so that's you uh, said it was going to be just a tip <laughs> <laughs> just kidding just kidding uh so everybody who knows you knows that you're from britain and uh, where exactly from how was the uh, souls soul something of souls um so my hometown is saint albans saint saint, saint, saint albans saint is Alban. actually the last the last roman town um wow. and uh Yeah, well, I say it's a sound city actually, because as a cathedral, that's the criteria to be a city in the UK. Um, very near to London, like you're in central London, 20 minutes, so it's very much like a commuter town. Nice schools, uh, pretty secure, like nothing really interesting going on generally, you know. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I lived there till I was 20, uh, before I went to uh, went to study and left it, left the city for my first time. Where'd you go to? I lived for three years uh, on the south coast in Sa Southampton. Southampton, Southampton, okay. Bigger city. Um, and How would you describe Southampton? <laughs> <laughs> um, qu uh, uh, quick synopsis, uh, a pretty shitty coastal city, nice. which had two big universities put in it. So a big influx of students and student money. So you've got a very... Um, exciting inverted commas to a student or young, like you know young person who wants to ha live 
uh, regular capitalist life, you know. Um, but if you go for two miles in any direction from city centre, it's pretty Trashy. derelict council estates. Um, really, like, yeah, like all, all the indicators of, of uh, society is not great here. Like on a, on a, on a, on data points uh, are not looking good. You know, for how would you scale Southampton from one to Blackpool? <laughs> I haven't been to Blackpool, so I can't. I can't. Okay, I'm just I kidding. Can't, uh, but, but I'm just kidding. Yeah, yeah. Closer to Blackpool than Berlin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> so, and you did you move in, at some point to London, or you I, lived in South? So Africa? all my family lives in London, okay. uh, apart from my dad, who lives on the south coast, uh, okay. uh, where where uh, uh, where he was born. Um, and um, yeah, like I was in London for my whole adult life uh, after after. Uh, Moving back, so after dropping out of uni uh, in Southampton, uh, the classical one, for, I would know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you know the illicit backdrop, like not not for TikTok viewers today. Yeah, um, kids, <laughs> kids, don't maybe, do that at home. Next time when we do a, a paid, don't paid, do that at uh, home, kids. <laughs> <laughs> paid subscription. Yeah, uh, only fans. <laughs> only fans. We apply universities. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, went to, went back to study after like learning. I actually um, wanna want to get a degree rather than uh, let my illicit life choices take me uh, in a different direction. Um, and uh, yeah, then work, worked and lived in London before moving here uh, in yeah February 2018. February 2018. 2018, magical year. Why, <laughs> why, why, why? I'm just kidding. We, uh, for, for us, it was also like the big boom of, uh, of rave culture in uh, Berlin. Probably the last big boom before uh, Corona. Mm, what, 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 because I ar I arrived. No, well, of course, because you arrived first uh, and you brought the energy. And uh, yeah, Mark and I started li like really. Not not not. I mean, at, at first, my, my energy needed a lot of adjusting. You know, I haven't always been what I am now in a party. You know. Yeah. Where um, where did you used to go in London? So when I was in the UK, I was partying. Um, like. <laughs> It's a very different approach, like, because uh, where uh, the lifestyle is very different, you know, and mm. you don't have the same freedom to uh, to um, enjoy your life without 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 stigma and without being able to without without having to like somehow play catch up, you know. And uh, so the parties were much less frequent, and of course, UK parties finish at six a.m., you know. Mm. So. The culture is to just binge. where we actually wake up, really. Um, I mean, I mean our party. second soul. Yeah, wakes yeah. Up. I mean, well, like when 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 I first when I first came to my first Berlin Berlin rave, I guess at City Force. Uh, this is yeah, like February February twenty eighteen. Um, <laughs> it used to be our favorite club at the beginning as well. I haven't been since. Like, uh, <laughs> not not because I didn't like it. You understand? Like, like, like. I mean, yeah, okay, there are reasons for that. Ben, so as usual, when we talk, uh, we're now getting lots of open tabs, um, which we're gonna have to like try and circle back to. Yeah. yeah. Um, maybe make notes if you like. If you're if we're missing some content you wanted to cover, because no, all good, all good. <laughs> I think I think it's getting exactly where it's okay, supposed okay, to be okay. getting. Let, let, let's just be spontaneous. Um, yeah. Uh, 2018, I, you came from London. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're talking about Sisi Force. Actually. Yeah, it's a Sisi. Let's yeah, go for Sisi Force. careful. <laughs> okay, this tab is uh, closing in uh, five minutes. Max. Max. Okay. Let's okay. go. <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's not so much about Sisi Force, but more about my adjustment because, like, yeah. um, I when I well, so when I was in the UK, we can come back to this uh, if we need to. Like, uh, I was going to drum and bass raves, drum and bass, uh, grime, like. High BPMs and techno, more aggressive, um, and the ravey uh, community in England is a, bit, a little bit harder than the German, right? Or uh, <sighs> no, you can't. Uh, you can't define it by harder it, it, than. It, no, no. Right? I, mean, I mean, I mean, because look, like people are people, and people party to express themselves and to get out emotion. In some, in some ways, healthier than others. Obviously, in Berlin, it's like, uh, well, in my opinion, this is another fucking tab. <laughs> Excuse my friends. Uh, we have have like um, like so. In my opinion, partying healthily.